Hello. 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 <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Everything good? Yeah, doing great. Um, it's nice to be talking to so many people from different places of the world, like yeah. one after the other. And it's awesome because it's, uh, I get so many good, positive comments and reviews on the new album. I'm, I'm all excited about it. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Well, when you when you when you guys are making a record, do you get anxious if fans and press alike will, you know, be supporting the record? Do you have that fear that no one will care about it? <laughs> well, I would be a I, I would tell a lie if I didn't if it didn't do anything to me personally because sometimes I read some of those comments. I'm like, really, like, like. Some people are I find they, they just don't care or they're very hateful about certain bands or certain things that you do. Uh, but in general, sometimes when it's constructive and they bring a good point, I'm like, oh, okay, like, like you see another angle from somebody else's yeah. vision and you're like, oh, maybe that guy has a point there. And then I, I keep it in mind, like I, I, I try to view things constructively but sometimes yeah. if it's just mean to be mean it sucks right. because you, of course we put a lot of effort into these albums and we try really hard every time we push ourselves hard so when you read that it's like ah but then you gotta learn to let it go yeah. and just uh <laughs> this is the best thing to do otherwise you're gonna end up with cancer or something yeah. <laughs> you know one of the things for me about you know i I tend not to make album reviews just for the simple reason that music is very personal to me and yeah. either I like it or I don't. And I don't exactly. Have, and I don't have the expertise in the sense because I know bands put a lot of effort and a lot of time in creating those songs. And I'm not one to say that, oh, that sucks. You know, it's... Maybe it's just not for me, but you know, I have to respect what the band does. And and it applies to any genre of music. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just heavy metal or anything, it's to every music. You have to respect the effort that you know the person puts into it. And you might like it or not, but have some respect. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, because I mean artists are still very human yeah and uh there's a point where like you might not like a certain jar or a certain style of, of, of especially in metal it's so broad even just metal in general there's yeah you can you can be way this way or way the other way and it's it's completely different but it's still metal so to if you, if you don't like a certain sub jar of metal then just at least say something like ah, it's not for me but i appreciate the effort or whatever it is <laughs> yeah. and when did you guys start because you guys released the previous record in 2020 just you know pandemic time which was right probably the craziest i i don't you know mankind has live you know throughout some crazy shit but i think that 2020 2021 it's probably there on top of the craziest shit that yeah. happened to us. I mean, I mean, no, nobody expects the world to stop, and yet there it is—the world has stopped. And yeah. you're like, wow! And it's kind of a time where you reflect upon a lot of stuff, and especially us in a band, we kind of want we we wanted to know a lot about what's going on behind like all of this, and we kind of. Me and Morsi and I went a bit crazy down the rabbit hole trying to listen to all kinds of crazy conspiracies. And then some stuff are really out there and you're like, no, nah, I can't be. But then some other stuff you're like, eh, is it, could it be? And then you you look for more deeper explanation and it's, it's insane when you start connecting the dots. And a lot of these little things, I think we put a little bit somewhere in, in this new album. And the team of Goliath was really about like, that like the little guy fighting this big beast whatever yeah. the beast is and it's like there's a point where it's just they're gonna do whatever they want to do and and if the world stops it stops and but the important message is that you have to try to question and and see what's going on and see if we can push back somehow all, all of these 
crazy things and and that's that's the message behind Goliath is is I think all of us were were a lot more than they are and if yeah. we decide to change something I think I think it could very well happen if everybody gets together but then they keep everybody divided and, and it's it's hard but it's a that's a subject for another <laughs> tough topic but <laughs> you know, that, that, because but, but but it's it's interesting to talk about it because you know we by history we know war tactics in a way to beat the enemies one of them is to you know to try to divide to conquer it's a very well known tactic you know yeah. to divide people and then conquer and you know create fear in people i think that's what happened in the pandemic and you know i'm not criticizing the lockdowns or anything because i didn't know what it was they Probably most of us didn't know what it was. Yeah. And we only knew that people were dying and what they were going to do. There was, because if it came from China, either from an animal or from a lab, we still yeah. don't know the origin of the of the virus in that sense. Uh, China doesn't give any information because they don't want to be seen as a weak spot or anything like that and without information it's very complicated to try to keep everyone calm and not yes go, you know so what were we supposed to do <laughs> i mean we wrote more music <laughs> <laughs> which is a good but thing you know a lot of them <laughs> did that and i think it was probably the best way to keep the sanity was yeah it's like a, yeah you gotta find some sort of therapy or comfort in into something because otherwise it's it, it drives people insane and like yeah I, fe I feel sad for like um my my mom's sister because she's like 75 or something and she lost some probably some of the last good years of her life to something like that being alone in her apartment and i i feel very terrible for these people in, 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 in that situation at the point they are in their life. Yeah. I mean, we're us, we're still young. We, we can, we can take some, some stuff, but it sucks when you give away some uh, good years of your life to something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for, for cataclysm, I talked about the last record being released in 2020. When did you guys start? Did you guys start immediately collecting ideas for Goliath? Uh, how was the the writing process? When did you guys start? Okay, okay, <laughs> on, this, on on this new album. When did it all start? It. Well, we had a, we changed drummers um, after the last record of Unconquered. Uh, things things kind of went south a little bit with the with our, our last drummer Ali, and we, we we had we for a little while we. We had no drummer, and but there was no touring, so it, it kind of worked itself out. But when we found James, <clears throat> it was kind of cool to actually just go back out on the road and play, like promote the the the, the, the unconquered record. But at the same time, just to get to know each other musically and and personally, see if we would get along, and which we did, and we really we really enjoy playing music together and spending time together. So. I think that led to eventually starting writing music and and we only started I think uh I'd say about like last summer uh we did a tour in the US with DSI in August uh last August and then we came home and then that's when I I picked up my my guitar and started putting riffs together so uh, it was kind of like a a four or five month thing of, of work for this record, but it was kind of like an everyday work. I, I, I was really into it. And when we first started putting piecing music together, th that's all I did. Like, it's like I put my life on old and just did this for like four months or five months that, that we were into it. And it was kind of a challenging, but at the same time, very spontaneous and very, uh, very therapeutic, I guess. So it was a, it was a good thing. Thing got pieced together fairly fast, and before we knew it, we had like ten song structures, and they were all pretty good. So we're like, okay, this we got something here. We just had, took the time to work each each song to their maximum potential, or at least in our opinion, we we, we tried to work them 
as as good as they could be. And uh, when we knew it was ready, we went to the studio, recorded everything. And then uh, when we left, I think we left for tour in end of January because uh, we did this long tour with soil work all over Europe. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we received the final mastering like like the days we left before for that tour. And we were like super stoked about it. Like everything was sounding great and and uh we were really happy about it. So uh kind of started the, the year nice to see like the the results of all the hard work, like getting pieced together and you're you're finally hearing all of it together and like wow, okay, it's good. <laughs> so um, there's a part of you is like proud, a part of you is like a relief because yeah. you know you never know. I've, and after, after all these years, like we've been in a band for so long that, and and one of my goal is like I actually want to try to write music that means something and that also is new and fresh, even though we've been a band for so many years. Because you wanna you wanna keep a little bit of those elements that made us who we are from the early days and not not completely turn your back on those and you want you want those in there but at the same time i don't want to be that band that puts out 15 records and every one of those records sound the same yeah like i i like all the records to be different and you want to bring some new elements to it and i think we succeeded in doing that so i was very proud of that uh, part myself and the boys as well because everybody was kind of super committed and gave 200 percent and and it's it's scary sometimes because we're not always in the same frame of mind frame when it comes yeah. to all that like sometimes we'll start a record and one or two guys are into it but the other two are kind of eh, like like they're <laughs> it's it's like you gotta get everybody on board and i i feel we were this one so i'm, I'm proud of that one and then obviously, besides you being a songwriter, you have the role of producer and engineer. Uh, is it easy to switch caps uh, between the, the songwriter and the producer and telling the other guys, you know, I, I want you to play like this or I want, you know, Maurizio to to sing, you know, yeah. differently. Is it easy to change, you know, between those roles? Well, it's sometimes it depends because some albums I, I kind of like being the guitar player and not have to worry about the production aspect. I just want to play and and make the best record possible. But sometimes when I get into that role, I like it as well because the important thing I I find with 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 the producer add on is that you you have the big picture of where you want things to go, yeah. and I find if you have that vision or that picture, it makes everything. Uh, much easier because then you work to, towards that goal and you you include opinions of everybody in the band within that big picture and everybody agrees to okay let's go there so it makes it so much easier and that's what I try to do when I have my, my the, the, the the producer thing going is that I want to make sure we're going to the same direction and that we all shooting for the same thing and by doing that I think it makes makes everything much more smoother and, and then you you know where where you're off track and sometimes you're like okay this is too left field or it doesn't <laughs> fit where, where you're going so you're like you cut it out from the start so you don't waste your time on certain yeah. things because sometimes it's what happens you're like okay maybe i want to try explore over there and then you start going and you waste like a couple of weeks trying to achieve something that doesn't materialize at the end and yeah. i find when you're working on an album to some extent, it doesn't matter, but to some extent, time matters. Like you want to get it done within a certain amount of time, and if you start going or like in too much crazy places, you end up with not being not very productive. Yeah. So you have to kind of keep keep the troops within that circle of productivity, and I, I guess that's a big part of the the producer uh, role. Yeah, and when when one of the band members try to impose or, or try to say, okay, I want to experiment like this, and as as you were saying, you spend two weeks trying to go that direction, and then everybody realizes, okay, it's not working. <laughs> you yeah, are, exactly. Do you normally say, "I told you so"? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I'm sometimes I'm right, or but sometimes. You know, the opposite happens too, where I'm completely proved wrong. And then the guy's like, look at this. And then we're all listening to it. And we're like, wow, 
like and that happens but usually it's more of a i told you so uh <laughs> situation <laughs> and you know having your own studio as well uh does that help um you know when it comes to recording obviously it makes everything easier if you have a studio at home very can yeah. you probably if you wake up at three in the morning have insomnia or something like that you have a crazy idea i'm going to record it it's probably exactly <laughs> it's probably easier but um for cataclysm how does does it work well having your own studio and you guys record in different studios but the main work is done in, at yours yeah I think. yeah so how, how is it working in, in your own studio well i like it because it's like I'm, i'm being in my own kitchen and i have my own set of tools to to prepare the the, the soup like <laughs> that, that's how i see it so i i because everything i i own in my studio is 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 because i like the way they sound i like the way they work um all the softwares i have uh, the the monitors then the mic preamps compressors all this stuff so for me it's like it's like being in the best environment possible because uh, having the equipment and like you said having the, the the possibility to just stop everything i'm doing to go record an idea just because it pops in my mind i think it's great and uh, and that's how the best songs come to life because sometimes you're working like uh, I'll be mowing the lawn in the backyard and then I finished I'm like okay I got it I run I pick up my guitar I start recording then as soon as it's recorded I, I send it to the guys see what they think like what do you think of this I just have this idea and, and a lot of times when those magic moments happens then you have to kind of cap capture capture it and, and then roll with it and If you if I see that everybody's excited, then it's a good thing. Or sometimes like it's just me that thinks I have a good idea, then everybody else is like ah, <laughs> that happens as well. But I, I I like working in my own environment. I think it's it's uh, it's a luxury. I wish that more bands would be able to be set up in that way. I think in in two thousand twenty three, a lot more people are having home studios now than back in the day. But but it's it's cool because my studio is actually a professional studio. Like it's not just a computer with with yeah. a mic preamp. So I, I I have that luxury to be working on really high quality at home, and I think it's amazing. Yeah. Do you have like a you know just for my curiosity? Do you have a lot of analog equipment like a mixing desk? You, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can I can show you. I have a. <laughs> So it's my little place. Um, yeah, of course, because uh, you know, I've learned to work on old school equipment. Um, the first studio I ever worked at only had like the two inch tape machine with those old SSL consoles and all the analog outboard gear. And because I've I've learned to work on that, a lot of that stuff is still in my uh, in my my uh, work habits because yeah. to me that's what I know. I still like turning knobs uh, <laughs> like actual real physical knobs instead of being there with my mouse on the computer i think i think just the feeling of doing it even though the computer emulation are really close and yeah. like uh, most humans would not be able to tell the difference between the, the uh, computer plugin and, and the actual analog hardware just the fact that you're turning the knob and you're feeling it like okay i'm turning it and you're like yeah there and you, you know when it's right It's just better to me than, than the mouse. Like you're turning it on the mouse, it's not the same vibe. Yeah. And but it, that's because of the way I learned. Like there's there's younger guys that are doing it on the computer, and they're like super awesome, and they do great great work with it. It's it's a different way of working. My my setup is a bit hybrid. Uh, I have all the latest softwares and the latest technology, and I use a lot of it. But then I use I like to use a lot of the old school stuff as well. I I, I make it like a hybrid way of, of working yeah is it easy to to still get like those analog you know compressors you talked about the ssl stuff uh, is it easy to find those compressors those slices of hardware um, to install it's, it's it's still easy to get them but they're very pricey like uh, that's why a lot of bands don't have these pieces of gear because it's 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 expensive, and then you have to justify the the cost. Yeah, uh, I think I think in my case, the way I did it is I I started 
running my my little studio like way back in the day. So everything I have is an accumulation of me buying a little bit of gear every year and then uh, saving a bit of money. I'm like, okay, I'll buy a, a badass compressor today. And, and, and then I, I own it. I'm like, yeah, I, I have it home and it's it's great. And, and that's how I built my little uh, uh, studio and being 30 years in the business. And now between the albums and the tours, I get to work with smaller bands or other bands and, yeah. and, uh, also, that brings a little bit of an income. And what I do is like, luckily with Cataclysm, the income is is good enough for me to live on and pay my bills. So every bit of money that comes in from working with a band in the studio, I take it and I buy equipment with it. And I, I and it's just for my personal pleasure. It's not to make things like super big and I'm like, hey, look at me. I got this huge studio. It's It's... It's more something I'm passionate about. Yeah. And I, I collect some of the stuff and some of the piece of gear and stuff that I worked on, on uh, in a big studio when I started. And I'm like, one day I'm going to own you. And then I find <laughs> it online. I, 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 I buy it and I have, I have someone that's really good in electronic, like opening it up and make sure it's clean and, and well yeah. working and all that. And it's expensive and pricey, but, I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumb putting my money and stuff like that. But, but I I like owning it. I'm a bit of a collector as well yeah. of some of these things. And and perhaps one day, if I don't want to do this anymore, it's going to be worth some money, and I can sell it back. But to me, it's just collect having it myself in my own place. I find it's it's awesome. Yeah, and you know because as you said, like there's plenty of plugins like from Waves and stuff like that that can emulate any compressor, any tape machine, anything, you know, you can get, <laughs> there's a plugin for everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, they made, they made everything that's available out there. There's a plugin version of it somewhere and usually it's pretty good. So like, I'm, I'm not going to knock it down. I think it's yeah. a great te technology. It's just a, it's just a vibe thing for me. I think music for me, it's a lot about emotions and feeling and just the fact that you're doing it with nubs, and with with the old equipment, I, it has a, a vibe just of working on it. And I think that you can kind of hear in the end result of everything. Because, you know, with the analog stuff, you know, even if it's a, an amp, a preamp, a, you know, whatever, you can, there is a slight difference in the sound. I think, you, you know, I... I've used I have Pro Tools, I have okay. I have plugins, even though I don't I just I'm just I just like sound. You know, I'm yeah. just curious and I like to see, you know, what's the deal about, you know, the J37 tape machine, you know, yeah. what what was the all the deal? And I like to explore that because when I record my radio show, sometimes I just like to put like a that J37 play yeah. in the final in the mastering just to give a bit of a warmth that no one no one will notice I know yeah it's just I a do. little uh, <laughs> it's a little detail yeah but it, I know it's there and I know there is a very <laughs> very slight difference in the sound but do you feel a, a big enough difference when you're working with analog compared to digital well, the main difference I find is like, uh, especially with compression, I I, I think analog, an analog compressor, uh, if you know what a compressor does, you, you'll you feel it, like you, you'll feel the elastic of the sound going like like this. And that that movement, I, I don't think they can quite replicate it with the, with the digital stuff. It's going to do exactly the same thing, but you're not going to feel it the same. It, it's, it, I like it when, if you put an eye uh, an analog compressor on, on on your old mix, and you see it, you feel it going like this, and then you really feel the music. And to me, I uh, I get excited about yeah. it when I, I turn it on because what I do is a lot of the time I'll work in the computer, and then when it's time to add it in the chain, then I put it on. I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and I, I I it's a feeling thing, and I think I I really notice a difference when when it comes down to EQ, it's a bit different because EQ is just like you're gonna try to fine tune certain things so maybe the analog is a little more dark which could be good in a sense because sometimes 
when you hear any everything too precisely, it's, yeah. it's not it's not pleasant. You want to have a little bit of a, a blanket, a yeah. comfortable blanket over the sound, and I think that's what analog does. Uh, whether you use like a, a good mic preamp or a, a good EQ, and you have that that comfortable blanket on top of the sound, and then when you if if you use the digital stuff, it's completely pure and it's like in your face right yeah. there which for certain things it's, it's great but you don't want everything like this because then you don't know where to place it and how to piece it but again like some younger engineers don't have a problem with it and they do it and it sounds amazing it's it's just it's just a, my preference and the way i see things then having a little bit of that Comfort, comfort blanket here and yeah. there. I think it, it it helps everything comes out better for my taste, uh, at least. Does the analog give more of a breathing in the sound, so to say, compared to digital? Well, nowadays, uh, like if you're able to, like, say you have good uh, converters and you're using like the maximum, like uh, thirty-two bit, uh, maybe, maybe like, you want to do like ninety-six, thirty-two bit. Uh, of sample rate and then it's so precise that i mean the, the, any little details and the symbols and everything is going to be re reproduced super accurately and uh, i think it's a, then it's a preference and then i think the the analog is still imperfect and that imperfection it's what makes the sound better for certain yeah. people and that's also what we're used to listen to like all these like 70s, 80s, like 90s records that were all done analog. We all love those records, and, and that's because of the all those imperfections make it great at the end. And then in the digital world, everything is so precise and perfect. You can't really knock it down for yeah. not, not sounding good because it sounds great. It's 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 amazing. Like, but being too amazing sometimes it's <laughs> it's a it, it's a thing. Like you want I, I know for me, it's a, like you want a bit of that grit or like a, it's like an old muscle car. Uh, yeah. You want to drive an old muscle car. You want to hear the engine and everything's kind of a bit weird because it's old technology, but the, you really feel it and you, you love driving it. And I find it's the same with, with the analog musical equipment. And then for the live setting, how does it? Uh, because obviously, analog, uh, digital these days makes everything easier when it comes to traveling. Uh, uh -huh. It doesn't. You probably don't have to pay to carry the amps or the heads and everything. Um, when you play live, how does it? Uh, how do you prefer to 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 use? Do you use a digital system or do you have like still analog stuff going on? Uh, again, I do a bit of an hybrid thing. Um, I like the digital uh, stuff for my uh, my own tone that goes to the front of house, just because because of the convenience. Um, because once you set your tone on on a on a record and you think you have the perfect sound for, especially for that particular album you're working on, then using something like the Camper or the Quad Cortex, you can snap a capture of that sound, and it's. It's, it does it very well. It's hard to tell the difference between the amp and the, the capture. Yeah. And once you captured it, then it's super convenient to bring that with you all over the world. And you just go to a, a concert, you plug in your thing, and it sounds like the record in five minutes. And you don't have to think about it or have your engineer coming in with mics and try to find the perfect mic placement with the like the perfect EQ and all that, that you, you've done that work already in the studio. So you just have to carry it with you. And I find that really uh, awesome compared to the way things were, like, let's say 20 years ago, where you had to really work it to make it good. And it's, it, it has merit in some ways, but I, I find it allows me to focus on the show yeah. more than the actual gear and the sound. Cause then you don't have to worry about it. You know it's going to be good, unless the PA where wherever you're playing sucks. That happens as well. But in the most case, it's still going to be the best sound you're going to get out of that PA if it's direct. Yeah. But I, I have a setup like that. Like live, I like using a camper for my sound, and then uh, I send that to a, a guitar head and a guitar cab, or sometimes two heads and two cabs to have it in stereo each side of the stage. And then that's my monitoring on stage for, for me and for the guys because 
that's again that's what we know and that's what we feel comfortable with we yeah. like to have loud loud amps on, on stage it's kind of like a a, a motorhead moment where yeah. everything's like super loud but that's what we know and that's what we like so we still do that but that sound that we have on stage it's strictly for us yeah and the the sound that the fans get in the front is it's the emulation from the camper from the studio sound that we had it's a, it's a capture of that yeah you know i i, I asked that and I, i know we're running out of time but it's because sometimes when you when i see a band playing in a club or something and they use all digital mm -hmm. it's kind of weird because if you're in the front of the stage there's no yeah. amps, there's nothing and sometimes you know you hear like a slight guitar sound coming from the side and then you just hear the voice and probably the drums Sometimes. Especially, especially bands that plays with all the in ears. Yeah, exactly. Like they 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 all hear themselves perfectly, but everybody else in their room are like, <laughs> no. So it's kind of weird. We're, we're, we're a bit old school in that sense. Like uh, we like the amps crank to, to yeah. ten on stage, and then that way everybody has a good vibe and in, in the club and on stage. And then the the, the digital stuff is for the. the the broader PA for yeah. So so if you're if you're that guy that sits in the back of the room and listen to the show, you're gonna be like, wow, it sounds really good. Yeah. If you're that person in the front, then you get a lot more of the real amps and the, like you said, the 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 real drums like goes over like the, if we have triggers or things like that, you'll hear yeah. the real the, the real acoustics, and I think it's a cool blend as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, just to wrap it up, you know, Goliath is coming out soon. Uh, 40 minutes long, I think it's one of those perfect albums to play from start to finish. Um, oh, thank did you. you guys, did you guys think about that when you put an album? When especially, it's not really concept, but there is a concept connecting the song somehow. But is it something that appeals to you to play an album from start to finish? Well, it's it's a goal of us to, whenever we work on a record, to actually try to have no, like, dull or boring moments and by that I, i mean like it's good to have dynamics you can have like really heavy parts and then go into something super soft to break it off and then you you come back heavy again like you you get a punch in the face with those dynamics i think it's great but we definitely try to have no boring parts and to cut those out like we aren't those when we have a all the songs are starting to uh to form and and look like we have like structures and all that then then i have the the luxury to record it in, in my place and then we can listen to it and then everything that seems long or out of place or or that's kind of like could be better then we we chop it off and we try to if if it needs something else there we replace it by something better and if it doesn't then we sometimes we, we I'm famous for that. I'll take a five minute and a half song and it ends up being three minutes on the record because I chopped off all the parts that I thought were not necessary. And I think it's better to have a full three minutes of like everything like back to back and well arranged and, and perfect rather than have a six minute songs. And then you get bored by the end of it because there's uh, parts that you think are long or, yeah. or but, the, but then again, like every, everyone has a different way of looking at music, but I prefer short and better than long and, and having moments where I, I, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, there is place for everything. You know, when you listen to a prog band, you probably expect 10, 15 minute long songs. Yeah, because it's a different thing. Like if, if you start listening to a, a good prog song, you want to get carried into a, a different world. Yeah. And, and it's like things keeps happening and you keep like progressing in within the song and that environment. And it's great. And it fits perfect. The, that, that jar music. And I, again, I, I, I do like Prague. I like that yeah. stuff, but that's not what we're aiming for, for cataclysm. Like we're, I, we're not that type of band. We're more of like a, a good old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We want everything. We want everything to punch you in the, the chest. And that's, that's how we like it. Everything louder than everyone else or something yeah. along those lines. <laughs> all right, GP, thank you very much for your time. All the best for Cataclysm. Thank you. You guys played Portugal, you know, when you did the Swell Work Tour. So hopefully uh -huh. we can see you guys back again on the on the next tour. So uh, fingers crossed for that to happen. All the, I mean, I hope so. for, all the best for Goliath and I hope to see you guys soon. All right. 
Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.